Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. This is a good time. Welcome to the Hush House. We're so glad to have you here this morning. Um, and as in all things, we're sorry that we don't have a bigger crowd because we're talking about peace. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're talking about peace. We're talking about whose peace is it anyway? All right. All right. Whose peace is it anyway? Would you say that with me? Whose peace is it anyway? Yeah, so we, you know, we, we're, we're very blessed. We have a sister who has the audacity to be ridiculous and travel around the country <laughs> talking about peace. All right. All right. Imagine that. Let's yeah. Yeah. Woo. Right. We're just really excited today because um, today is just a, a really special day. Besides the fact that we have Sister Cindy Sheehan here uh, to talk about peace and to help us to remember about what women can do when they get upset. All right. All right. What All women right. can do when we're talking right. about our children, okay. about saving right. our children. All right. What women will, what extent a woman will go to, go through in order to stand up for what's right when it has to do about our children. All right. You see, there's a system out there that's working to destroy our families. Yes. Yes. And they're starting with women and children first. Yes. Yes. Why? Because women and children are the fruit. You know, because out of the womb comes the fruit of our country, comes the fruit of our hope and our determination. All right. And so it takes a woman to have the audacity to say, no matter what anybody thinks, mm -hmm. no matter what anybody believes, that we will live and not die. All right. Amen. That we will not give up. Yeah. That we will keep on going. That's right. And today we're going to uh, uh, welcome Cindy, who's going to have a few words to say to us today. And then we have two other incredible women standing yes. right behind her, right. two local women right. who have that yes. same kind of heart right. and that same kind of mission for the cross. Right. So we are very blessed also to have our sisters, uh, uh, sister here, uh, Crystal Crittington, who's running for mayor. Right. Yeah. Woo! 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 And then we also have our own daughter, Monica, who is running for city council. Oh. Yeah. 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 And we are so absolutely, extremely proud of these women who have decided to stand where, where people couldn't stand before. Mm -hmm. And so if you'd be so kind, we'd like to welcome our special guest here, who's awfully tired because Lord have mercy, he's riding a bike <laughs> all the way from California is no small task. Well, but that's a sister of my spirit, somebody who dares to be ridiculous for what's right <laughs> yeah. and for what's true. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mama Sandra and uh, Baba Charles. So that's right, right? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not only tired from riding my bike across the country, but I'm tired because someone decided to honk his horn out front all night. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So riding your bike across the country is not as exhausting as you would think. But, um, oh my gosh, there's so many issues that we need to address. And I think that politics has to be on the local level. Yeah. I think that's the only way that we can get in and make the changes that, that are good for our families and our children and our communities. And, um, who else but somebody who is a true female, a true what I call matriarch, not patriot, but matriot, you know, someone who loves every uh, person in humanity, not just the ones in our own borders, but every baby, everybody's baby, someone who would not order their own children to go kill the children of other mothers, right. never ever right. in a million years. All right. All right. So we need true women, not women who have, who might have the, the, um, you know, the outwardly, appearance. yeah, appearance of being a, a female, but who is very warlike, very like someone like Hillary Clinton. Someone like um, Condoleezza Rice, someone like Golda Meir, you know, those are females, but they're certainly not women, you know, so there's a difference, there's a difference, and, and 
this is how insidious our system is. We're conditioned from the time we're born to, to obey authority. Uh, uh, Sister Sandra said it's b better to be obedient than sacrifice. Well, I have a, I am not obedient. I have a problem with that. But, um, but we teach our children peace. You know, I don't know very, very many mothers who tell, tell their children to go out and be violent to solve problems, right? The mothers, the families are saying that there is a peaceful, nonviolent way to solve problems. And then, even though I am white, you know, I've always been poor. We've always been working class. And my son didn't have the same opportunity to go to college that people and uh, the children of the 1% have, right? right? So he joined the military to get a college education. And college is a human right, not a privilege for the 1%. Right. Education, I shouldn't say college. Good education that is fully funded and accessible. And I was reading about the overcrowding in your schools here. All the, all the school districts are, they're closing schools. They're making it, it impossible for the teachers to teach and the students to learn. And they're teaching them things that, <clears throat> that don't have any value in their lives anyway. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and so my son joins to um, get a college education and he gets killed. You know, that's a terrible price to pay to want to educate yourself. And then my daughter, she got her master's and she has $50,000 in student loans. That's abominable. You know, it's not for something that's a human right. You know, um, housing is a human right. Here in the United States, we have 18 million empty housing units. We might all be here in the city. <laughs> and we have 3 million homeless people. Right. <laughs> and that's five houses for every homeless person. Right. Even the babies, right? Wow. Right? And yeah. so what kind of society lets people sleep on the streets when they have empty houses? Terrorism, terror. And I want to say that you know, these local issues that you all are struggling with, I've been talking to, uh, you know, the people since I got here, and I have said that Detroit is in the vanguard of this economic collapse, yes, this right. shock doctrine, this disaster capitalism, right? Yes. You unfortunately have been in this since the 70s, and it's spreading to the rest of the country. Right. And so it's so important for Tour de Peace and me to be here yep. to yep. see yep. this yep. and to and to you know give you all hope that um, your struggles are valuable and inspire us mm. around the rest of the nation. Mm -hmm. You know, people are starting to turn towards each other, yes. which yes. is the best place to turn. That's right. Right? Our communities and our families. They're starting to say, what can we do together to build community? And to, and to thrive and survive this collapse. And you all have so much to teach the rest of us because you have thrived. That's right. You have rejected. Right. You have rejected the oppression. Yes. You have rejected this that they have put on you. That's right. And another thing is that our country since 9-11 has spent one and a half trillion dollars just in Iraq and Afghanistan. Mm. That's not the trillions mm. that um, go for the Pentagon, for the nuclear program, mm. for veterans care and blah, blah, blah. I know how to cut the VA, VA um, budget. You make health care a human right yeah, and single well. payer for everybody. Yeah. If everybody had that access, you wouldn't need a VA. Right? right? So um, they're literally sucking our communities dry by these wars for empire. That's right. And no matter what local issues we're struggling with, which are so important, and I'm going to run for governor of California with the right. yeah. <laughs> and saying we reject the establishment.
establishment. We reject your wars. We reject your economic oppression. We reject your environmental devastation. All right. And we might not win, but they have to know that we're out there opposing them every step of the way. And and we and sometimes, especially on a local level, you have a better opportunity of getting in there to make the changes, to be the squeaky wheel, to be the gadfly, to never let them forget that we oppose them every step of the way, All right. Right. Right? Right. right? And we don't need to work with those kind of people. We need to work with our communities. Right. We need to build the support that gives us the, um, the room to make the changes. The changes are gonna come from the from people that get in there with a with a political power, but it needs a, they need the grassroots behind them, yes. right? You know, ne- and we need to never stop. Right. So, um, so even though these issues are so important, I mean, <clears throat> they're not they're not just important; they're vital. Yeah. You know, they're matters of life and death. Death, literally. I'm not exaggerating. Oh, yeah. And. <clears throat> We have to say, if our federal government, if our nation, the nation, the federal government, wasn't wasting trillions of dollars on empire, we would have the money for our communities. We would have the money for education, single-payer health care, housing, food free of GMO and other poisons. And we would have that. You know, and I think a healthy America, because I'm not saying that I want the wars to stop so we can have a good economy. I want the wars to stop so people stop dying, right? But it has a benefit. When the U.S. reduces its empire, ends its empire, stops the wars, and people can live in peace without having to worry about their homes being destroyed, their communities being destroyed, their nations, their way of life, their sovereignty being invaded. Well, you know, and here, if we have a healthy economy and society in the United States, that benefits the entire world because we're not poisoning the world or killing the world with our war machine. So the for, I think the forefront of our demand has to be peace, unconditional peace. You know, here and at home. I, wait, we listen to home. Home and away. <laughs> well, here, you know, my home's California, but my home's been every some someplace different every night. Wow. And as I go across the nation, we're seeing the same microcosm of what's happening wow. here. Yes. Wow. And and like I said, and instead of people withdrawing into their own homes their own problems, they are seeking each other to solve them and to say, okay, we have a government, but you know what was happening in Detroit is more important than than what's happening in washed up DC. So keep keep your your community um, healthy. And if if we have healthy communities, It'll spread across yeah. this way. Yeah. Horizontalism is the only way for change. But if it spreads horizontally, the only way up it has to go is this way. Uh, so no, no trickle down war, no trickle down economic oppression, no trickle down environmental devastation. Trickle up peace, yes. Yes. trickle up love, yes. trickle up health Thank you. and community. Thank right. you. Yeah. Yeah.